Welcome back. In this video, we're going to resume our work with triangles and explore in more detail some of the properties of triangles. So let's begin with our first theorem, the theorem that the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Now this may be something that you already knew coming into this. However, let's take a look at a proof of that. If I have triangle ABC already listed here, and I draw a line through A, draw a line through A that's parallel to BC, well, I would use the parallel postulate to do that, allows me to draw that parallel line through A. I create three different angles, angle one, angle two, and angle three. And hopefully I know that angle one plus angle two plus angle three, they form a straight angle, so they have to equal 180 degrees. Well, since my lines are parallel, because I drew them parallel, with the parallel postulate, then I know that because of my alternate interior angles, angle B is then congruent to angle 1, and angle 3, or angle C, is congruent to angle 3, also by alternate interior angles, because parallel lines imply the alternate interior angles are congruent. So if I knew that 1 plus 2 plus 3 was equal to 180, well, if I look at the inside of my triangle, again, the angles are made up of angles 1 plus 2 plus 3. So therefore, the sum of the interior angles of a triangle does equal 180 degrees. Let's look at some definitions. One thing we need to be familiar with is the exterior angle of a polygon. That's something new. An exterior angle of a polygon is formed by extending one of the sides of the polygon. So here, down in triangle EDF, you can see I've extended side EF to continue out. So, and we're only going to do one exterior angle per vertex. So I could extend DF out that way. I have another exterior angle. Or I can extend DE out and have one exterior angle. But we'll only do one exterior angle per vertex. And a couple properties of that exterior angle. It will be adjacent to the interior angle or next to it. And it's supplementary to the interior angle. So the interior angle and the exterior angle will be supplements. So let's take a look at a theorem we have here. We have a theorem that says the measure of the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum, so that means we're adding, the sum of the measures of the remote interior angles. Remote means far away. Okay, when you go to the airport, you park in remote parking, you're parking far away from the terminal. That's why it's not very expensive. But we are working at the remote angle. So like angle D and angle F would be the remote interior angles relative to angle 1. And hopefully we know that angle 1 plus interior angle F here are supplements, they add up to 180. Okay. Well, we also know from above that angle D plus angle E plus angle F also equal 180. That's the sum of the interior angles of triangle. Well, if angle 1 plus angle F equals 180, and angle D plus angle E plus angle F equals 180, logic tells us, or substitution tells us, that angle D plus angle E must equal 
angle 1. So angle D plus angle E, just watch my tick marks here, plus angle E must equal angle 1. So angle D plus angle E equals angle 1. And there we go. We can see that the exterior angle of the triangle is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. If I add those two together, that will equal angle 1. Another new concept in Chapter 7 is the midline theorem. And the midline theorem says that if we have a triangle, triangle ABC, and any segment joining the midpoints of two sides of the triangle, so the segment joining the midpoints of the two sides would be DE, so that we know that DA is congruent to BD, so D is a midpoint of AB, and we see that, that E is the midpoint of AC, because AE is congruent to EC, so we're connecting the midpoints of two of the sides, well, DE then must be parallel to the third side. So DE is parallel to BC. That's one of our properties. And then DE is one half the length of the third side. So BC is equal to 2 times DE or BC over 2 equals DE. So if DE is 10, we know BC has to be 20 because of the midline theorem. Let's do a sample question for this section and see what we have here. Sample question says, if one of the angles of a triangle is 80 degrees, find the measure of the angle formed by the bisectors of the other two angles. So we have our bisectors here. I don't have them labeled. I guess we could label them. We'll do big triangle ABC. And so we would say that DB bisects angle ABC and DC bisects angle ACB. And we want to find the measure of angle D. If one of the angles of triangle is 80, find the measure of the angle formed by the bisectors of the other two angles. We want to find the measure of angle BDC. Knowing that the sum of the interior angles of the triangle is 180, we know that triangle ABC is made up of 2x, plus 2y, 2x would be big angle B, and 2y would be big angle C, plus 80 has to equal 180 degrees. Some quick subtraction. We know 2x plus 2y equals 100. I see that they're all even, so I'm going to divide by 2, and I get x plus y equals 50. Well, triangle DBC, we should know that X plus Y plus angle D has to equal 180. Well, isn't X plus Y 50? So if X plus Y is 50, I can replace X plus Y 50 plus angle D equals 180. It's a quick subtraction tells us that angle D must be 130 degrees. So we have answered our question. We found the measure of angle D. It is 130 degrees. So a good sample problem using the properties that we have learned here in this particular section. And we'll do a little more practice with this when I see you in class.